I want to show you how you can calculate a theoretical spot rate. Now, when we price a bond, it's the present value of the future cash flows, which would be the coupon and the return of principal or the par value. Now, in introductory finance classes, we find the value of the bond by using one interest rate. So we just pick an interest rate, for example, off the yield curve, right, for the length of the bond, and then we just use that rate to discount every single cash flow. But technically, this isn't correct. What we should do is we should treat each of the cash flows of the bond as a zero coupon bond and discount each cash flow by the appropriate interest rate. So this is the traditional bond pricing formula. We use one interest rate, Y, to discount these cash flows, the coupons, and then the return of the par value. The correct approach is to use a different interest rate for each period. So we're going to have the uh, one period spot rate, the two period spot rate, etc. <clears throat> so here's an example. This comes from some CFA reading somewhere that I saw. And they want you to calculate the spot rate for year five. They've actually already calculated them for years one through four. So um, what are we going to do? Well, the par rate that's given in that table equals the coupon rate. That is, the bond is selling for its par value. So to find the price of the bond, we want to treat each of its cash flows as a zero coupon bond and discount the cash flow by that rate on the yield curve, that spot rate. So let's start with the bond that matures in two years to see if our results are the same as the spot rate that was previously calculated. Right? We want to, want to check and make sure we're using the right formula, we've done it correctly, and if we see that we're doing it right, then we can go after um, year five. So here, the coupon, if we assume the par value is one dollar, then the par rate for a two-year um, bond, 2.99 percent, would be 0 0.0299, would be 2.99 cents. So here the price of the bond equals the present value of that coupon, 0 0.0299, discounted by um, Z1, and then 1.0299, discounted by Z2 for two periods. Okay. We know what Z1 is, and we want to solve for Z2. So we have this equation here, right? We know the price of the bond. We know this. We know this, we don't know Z2, but it's the case that uh, if you have one equation and one unknown, you can solve for it. So what I've done is I've taken the present value of this, this equation, solved this, and brought it over to this side, right? Subtracted um, this from both sides, and I get 0 0.9708 equals this part, 1.0299 divided by 1 plus Z2 squared. So what do I do now? I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus uh, z2 squared to get it out of the denominator here. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.9708. I now have this right here. I want to get rid of that square so I can raise this to the 1 half power. If I raise this side to the 1 half power, I have to raise this to the 1 half power. And if I do that, um, I will then subtract 1 from this, and I will get 0 0.029989, or 3%, which is in fact what we've been given, what they've calculated for us. Let's do one more to make sure we're doing this correctly. So to solve for Z3, we use the same approach. We take the coupon for year 3, 3.48%, which would be 0 0.0348, for three periods, we're going to discount by the spot rate for year one, the spot rate for year two, and then we're going to solve for the spot rate for year three. So I'm going to dispense with all that algebra I did in the previous one. Anyhow, I'm going to take these two, 
the two present values. I'm going to subtract them from 1 to bring them over to the left-hand side of the equation. And then I'll do the same thing, right? I'll multiply both sides by this, divide this by this side, and then take the cube root. And if I do that, I should get 0 0.0350 or 3.5%, which is in fact what I get here. All right, now we're feeling pretty comfortable that we're doing this correctly. Let's just jump to doing um, or solving for Z5. We know what the par rate is, 0 0.0437, right, 4.37%. So that's going to be the cash flow for these five years. And of course, in that final year, you get back the par value. So we're going to discount the first cash flow by the first spot rate, the second cash flow by the second spot rate, the third cash flow by the third spot rate, the fourth cash flow by the fourth spot rate. And we're going to solve for Z5. And if we do that, we get 0 0.0445 or 4.45%. So again, how did we do this? If we assume that the par value is a dollar, then CT is the par or coupon rate. And then ZI is going to be the spot rate for each period I. Now, what's the general formula? The general formula I've had is that it's going to be, remember this was on the left-hand side of the equation, 1 minus the present value of all the cash flows up to one period before the uh, spot rate we're looking for. Okay, That's divided into 1 plus the coupon in period t, all raised to the 1 over t power minus 1. Let's see if we can do this in Excel. So I've got this same example here. And what I find is, is that it's probably a lot easier. You could do one long equation, but there's a good chance you'll mess that up. So let's do this quite simply by calculating the present value of each one of these um, cash flows. And then we'll take 1 minus that. And we'll do the equation that we have here. I think it's easier to do that. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, What's the um, coupon going to be? For year 5, it's going to be this number here, 4.37% or 0 0.0437, 4.37 cents. What's the present value of this? Okay, Let's use the PV function. The rate we want is we want to use the spot rate for that period. The number of periods is going to be here. There is no payment, and we want it to be a negative um, number here, because we want it to come out as a positive number. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that. So then I'll be able to copy this down. OK, 0 0.0426. I should be able to copy this down. So now I have the present value of uh, the cash flows from years 1 through 4 discounted at the appropriate spot rate. All right, I know I need this for the denominator, so I'm just going to say 1 minus the sum of these four cash flows. 1 plus C is just going to be equal to 1 plus, we have C here. And then let's see, let's plug into that formula. So we have to take this divided by this raised to the 1 fifth power minus 1. Let's see if we get that. So equals, I'm going to take this, I'm going to divide it by this, I'm going to raise it to the one-fifth power, and I'm going to subtract one. And sure enough, that is in fact what we get. Okay, We could put it in percentage terms, but we get 4.453% uh, or if you want to round off to 4.5%, uh, that would be fine too. So I hope you found this useful, Okay, easy to do, 
in Excel once you know that general formula which I gave back here and I think the easiest way to do it is to do it this way okay oftentimes when I grade homework students will do one gigantic equation and it's impossible to find the mistakes but here it's very easy to find um, you know, if you made a mistake calculating present value or adding these up or subtracting, etc.